Praise the Lord. A good Sunday morning to you. To all of you, my dear and precious friends, wherever you are and around the world, God bless you in a marvelous and in a wonderful way. As you have come into God's house on God's day with God's people to receive God's word. May he break the bread of life and give you the waters of life to quench your thirst and your hunger for him. May the Lord bless us all together as we come together as a family of God once more to worship him and to glorify his great and mighty name. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us all on this wonderful day around the world, wherever we may be. In your Bibles, shall we turn to Luke chapter 17, reading from verses 18. 28, sorry, to 30. And it reads thus, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they build it, and the same day that the Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Praise God for the wonderful reading of his word. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking that, and telling us, prophesying, forewarning us that when we look to the world events or we look around us and see the conditions in the world, social, political, educational, in every form. When we see the conditions similar to what was in Sodom, when those conditions are around us, he says, look, for then the Son of Man will be revealed. Praise God. I'm so happy to know that he is being revealed in our day and in our time by the opening of the word of God and making the, the word of God plain to us for every one of us to understand, for every one of us to humble ourselves to the word of God and to obey the word of God and walk in the light of your day and of your hour. Now, what Jesus was speaking of here was in the time of Lot as it was in the days of Lot. Well, then we need to go back to the book of Genesis around chapter 14 and uh, verses 18 to 20, and we will find the story of Abraham. We will read how that Abraham got word that his nephew Lot, who lived in Sodom, that he was captured by five kings and carried away into slavery. And the Bible tells us Abraham called for his uh, 300 servants that he had with him. 
and they girded themselves and got on their camels, their horses, and charged down after those five kings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those five kings, of course, my friends, King touch, king feel, king hear, king see. Oh, praise God. The five senses of the body. As much as that was, it was a symbol or a type of how the true believer would have to overcome or will be the overcomers over the five senses of the flesh. And so Abraham came down on with his servants. Oh, Praise God charged down upon them. The Bible said he defeated the five kings. And every believer that believes God, no matter what habits, no matter what trouble, no matter what trial, no matter what sickness, no matter what tribulation, temptation comes your way, I want to tell you definitively that God will grant you the power as he did to Abraham to overcome every one of these five kings that tries to take you captive and to rule over your mind and over your body and over your life. Oh, oh only believe. All things are possible to them that will believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so Abraham became an overcomer, defeating these five kings. Oh, and on his return back, the Bible tells us one came out. Also to meet him. And the name of the one that met Abraham. The Bible says his name was Melchizedek. King of Salem. Which means king of peace. Well, you know the type, the symbol. Jesus is the prince of peace. But back then, he was Melchizedek. King of Salem, praise God, hallelujah. You'll find uh, the Bible tells us this man, Melchizedek, he was mysterious. The other kings didn't know where he came from. The Bible tells us he had no mother, no father, no beginning, no ending. They simply did not know who he was. But I'm here to tell you today who he was and who he is and who he will continue to be. For Abraham, Melchizedek and Abraham met in the beginning of the Bible. Now we know that God promised to Abraham that what I do for you, I will also do for your seed. I will do it for your children. I will give them the promises I gave to you. Those promises will also be theirs. The covenant that I make with you, that same covenant will also be theirs. They will be the inheritors of whatever promises, whatever blessings, whatever covenants that I make with you, Abraham. And so we are Abraham's children by faith. Abraham's faith seed or Abraham's royal seed. We are kings and priests to God. And we are of the spiritual lineage of Abraham. That is the reason why we have Abrahamic faith. Abrahamic faith, what do I mean? Abraham heard a voice speaking to him, telling him, come out of your country. Come and follow me and believe me, the one true God. 
And the Bible says Abraham believed God and came out of his sins, came out of his idolatry, came out of his background of and culture of which he was. His father was a wealthy man down there uh, in that nation, but he came out of all of that. Praise God to hear the voice of God, to believe the word of God, and to follow the promise of God for his day and for his time. And so he met Melchizedek and the promises God made to Abraham were also made to Abraham's seed that would come down through the ages. I believe we are now in the last days. I believe the great Holy Spirit is here with us and among us and working and moving with a mighty hand, bringing his children out of all of Satan's prison houses where they were kept bound up, tied up, tangled up. God has brought them out and is bringing them out with a mighty hand to the glory of his name, just as he did to the children of Israel, brought them out of Egypt, just as he did to the children of Israel that were under Nebuchadnezzar. He brought them out of Babylon by a mighty hand. And now he brings us out of worldliness. He brings us out of filth and the mess of the world, the stench of the world, and the degradation of denomination. He brings us out of all of that. I, I, I just call denominations demon nations. Demon nations. For it seems as if the devil works in that, amongst them in a mighty way. I'm not speaking about the individual people in those denominations. But organizations are of the devil like that. Religious organizations. They're not of God. God never founded one of them. You'll never find that anywhere from the book of Acts right through to Revelation. Never founded them. God's people are an organism. A living body of Christ. Hallelujah. Walking in the light of God's word and obedience to the word of God. Hallelujah. So now, since Abraham met Melchizedek in type, it is also what Jesus is referring to. Listen to the parallel. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. I will not go into all of this right now, but just enough to point to you that he is speaking, that the children, the royal seed of Abraham, the faith seed of Abraham, will also have a meeting or will have to meet Melchizedek, just like Abraham met him back there. In that day, you are going to know it, that the children of Abraham, the royal seed of Abraham, are supposed to meet Melchizedek again by the promise of God. He gives us the time. He gives us the conditions of the time. And he tells us what people will be doing. Now, if you, you just look around you and you know it's happening, eating, drinking, partying, uh, uh, enjoying themselves and uh, all that going on, marrying, giving in marriage, taking on wives and wives, women taking on several men and all that sort of thing. It's going on right now. And Jesus said, when you see these things, then will the Son of Man be revealed. I believe he's being revealed right now. I believe the word of God is making itself known to you right now. Now you'll say to me, well, Brother Simon, I've heard about Melchizedek, but 
Who is this Melchizedek? Now this Melchizedek, in short, I told you and will tell you again, as we know, God is the eternal spirit. Living alone before the foundation of the world, before he created anything, God dwelt alone. And there this gr the great almighty spirit dwelling alone. Later on, he wanted to have children around him. He wanted to be a healer, a savior, a father, a deliverer. He wanted to be uh, a friend. He wanted to be all in all. And so this great mighty God, realizing that he had a plan in his mind, a, re a plan of redemption, a great marvelous plan. Genesis 3.18 tells you that in there, the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. God knew man would fall into sin and that man will need a savior. And since there was no one else, the Bible said he swore by himself. For there was no one else, no bishop, no pope, no prince, no king, no commoner, no none. There was no one else that could save the world, save the people, his children, but he himself. And so he decided that he would come down. Oh, what condescension bringing us redemption. And so God began to form himself from spirit to come down into flesh. Well, part of the way of that transformation in Greek words or in theological words, which you don't need, I'm using it so you can understand. God made himself into a theophany, a theophany, which is a, a spirit body, a word body. This word, he formed it into a body that had the shape of a man who was called Melchizedek, king of peace. King of righteousness, glory to God, hallelujah. And so Melchizedek, as Paul will tell you later, I believe in the book of Hebrews, that Melchizedek was really Christ. He wasn't Jesus Christ as yet, but it was Christ, amen. Without mother, without father, Without beginning, without ending, first and the last, oh glory to God, it was Jesus Christ, God bringing himself down to redeem his own. But now he is in this body representing himself in a theophonic body to the People of the world, they couldn't understand him. They couldn't explain him. They could not interpret who he was, where he come from, where he was going. Yet they knew he was a king and he was, uh, he had no traceability that they could not trace him. They just had to trust him and had confidence in him. Later on, that theophonic word body began to again change itself. I'll use another word. God began to enmorphe himself. E-N-M-O-R-P-H-E, Greek term, changing himself. He begins to enmorphe forming himself into the shape 
of what we know as Jesus Christ. For he was already Christ there in Melchizedek. But now he was going to have a physical human body. The body will be named Jesus. And Melchizedek Christ would be living in that body. Who is this Melchizedek? The same God that was there in the eternities become down to dwell in human flesh to walk amongst his creation that he had created. In your Bible, John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Did you hear what the Bible says? The Word was God. And furthermore it says, And the Word became flesh. So in between Melchizedek and Jesus Christ, there Melchizedek was being on warfare, becoming flesh. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Take God. He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. He's the God, the only one. I know God. He's God. And God don't ever change. I know God. He's God. And Jesus is his name. He's God when the lightning's flashing. He's God when the thunder rolls. He's God in the amen corner. He's God down in my soul. I know God. He's God. And God don't ever change. I know God. He's God. And Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God forevermore. And so God, the word form, became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, praise his wonderful name. You know the rest of the story. And the angel Gabriel came to a, a, a virgin and said, You shall bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Every child born, every person born has to be given an earthly name. They must receive an earthly name by which they will be recognized and called by. So when he came into flesh, they had to give him an earthly name. And that name was Jesus. How significant. Do you know the meaning of the name Jesus? The name Jesus is saying he is Jehovah has now become our Savior. Jesus means Jehovah, our Savior. The same Jehovah of the Old Testament that lived in the eternity came down and morphed himself into human flesh that he might become our Savior to deliver us from the bondage of sin. Hell, the grave, and from hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, friends, here was God being raised in a human body. But yet, being God, the Bible said he humbled himself. He took no reputation, as you find the book of Philippians. And there it is. He, he ran around like a, like a child, moved around like an ordinary human. But he was still God. And so one day, Joseph and Mary, they went up to the great feast. And there, the Bible says he got 
uh, they drifted away from him. God help you. Don't you drift away from the word of God. Don't lose the word of God. Don't let the attractions and the things of this life and of this world draw you away from the things of God. But hold to God's unchanging hand. Covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Oh, praise God, but hold to God's unchanging hand, now and forevermore. And so, when they realized that they lost him, they started to search around trying to find him. Friends, if somewhere in your life you fell away, backslid, lost the word, lost your position, it, oh my, come back to the word of God. Come back to this word and know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, glory to God. And now, friends, they search for him. And when they found him, Mary rushed to him and turned and said, Your father and I search for you. It was God in the body of a 12-year-old boy. And she knew it. For then he turned and he looked into her eyes and said, Woman, woman? Do you know to whom you're speaking? And she was quiet. In the Bible is not written, not another word came out of her. The Bible said she just took him and went back on their journey wherever they had to go. And it was never mentioned again in the Bible. But right there, God spoke out of that little boy's body, that child's body, amen, and brought her to her senses to recognize who it was that dwelt in that flesh body. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, amen. Well, I'm saying to say this, many say that Mary was the mother of Jesus Christ. Obviously, you know, that's unscriptural. That's error. That is completely wrong. For he was before her. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And there is Mary, they call the mother of God. She could not be the mother of God. God has no beginning, no ending. God eternal. Amen. What's the devil trying to do with that kind of a doctrine? Trying to tell you that she was eternal before he was eternal? There's only one eternal. And that one eternal is God. And all of his children, it's still God, but a part of him that's now being revealed and manifested upon the face of the earth. Mary is supposed to be the mother of Jesus Christ. But that's completely wrong. And that's the reason why he called her woman. He didn't call her, he didn't say mother. No, when she turned to him and said, your father and I, of course, she already, uh, because she also rejected the supernatural birth. By saying that, she was now claiming like, like Joseph was his father. And, and, and of, of course, she was rebuked by the Holy Spirit speaking through the child. Amen. Woman? Oh, my. See? He didn't say, oh, mother. No, no, no. She was not his mother. She was not the mother of God. Not the mother of Jesus Christ. She was... Look, he did not come from Mary, he was just passing through Mary. Praise the Lord. I hope you can understand and see that. I said he did not originate from or come from Mary, but he only used her as a vessel to pass through Mary 
to make himself manifested in the world below that we know of. Amen. Jesus Christ was really Melchizedek made flesh. Hallelujah. He was the father. He was the everlasting father. He was the prince of peace. He was the three in one, if you want to call him that. Hallelujah. He is all in all, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I am the Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Oh, praise his name, the governor. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, shining light. Glory to God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He had no earthly father, for he was the father. Amen. Praise God. God, one great poet, wrote this poem. I am that spoke to Moses in a burning bush of fire. I am the God of Abraham, the bright and morning star. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the whole creation, and Jesus is my name. Oh, who do you say that I am? And whence do you say that I came? Do you know my father? Or can you tell his name? Oh, hallelujah, praise God forevermore. My friends, how beautiful the revelation of the Godhead. How beautiful the revelation to know that God said to Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Amen. And God has never changed his mind about his word. The word of God never changes. And he himself said, I am one Lord, one God. Jesus is both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For he, Jesus, is both Lord and Christ. Thank God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. My friends, how beautiful this is. When God reveals this to you and you recognize the oneness of God and that he lives in me, he lives in you. Praise God. God forevermore. Amen. No wonder he said, I come in my Father's name. I've said this last week. My Father's name is Simon, and I come in my Father's name. Therefore, I'm also with the last name Simon. Amen. And Jesus said, he come in his Father's name. Praise God. So what is his Father's name? Christ, Jesus Christ. He is the one, the mighty God and the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the word Father means one who begets. One that can get a son, a daughter, a child. And so he came from the great Father's spirit, created a body for himself, and then came and lived in the body. Now because this great spirit of God created the body, the body was called the son. Not another person, but a body for the father spirit to come in to dwell in. God was in Christ. The father dwelt in the son. God living, working, and moving in his people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God that he is the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Thank the Lord. Back then, Jesus being created and the Father dwelling in him. But thank God we are living in the day where we can say, I am a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, I've been born again. How happy I am. Why? I am the new 
new creation of this hour. You are of the new creation of this hour. Spiritually, God has changed you. God has transformed your life. And now he lives in you. And you are the new creation of God. The continuation of that creation back there. Amen. No, that is why we talk about Christian. Do you want to be a real Christian? Do you want to know that it is really not Christianity is not you trying to live like, live Jesus' life or live uh, God's life. No, it's God come down and dwell in you. And he begins to live out of you and through you, his own life, helping you, empowering you to overcome the world, the flesh, the devil, your sins, your habits, all the, everything that tried to control you. The great king of glory, the governor has come to overcome Satan and all his works and to identify you before the world that you are one of his lambs, one of his children, one of his beloved ones, one of his elect, that you are one of his own. And he says, all those are in the palm of my hand, and I will not lose not one of them. Hallelujah. Praise God. He will not lose not one of us. Let's put our trust and our faith in him and live for him. Give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. My friends, let me make a statement here. The true daughter of God and sons of God are not sinners saved by grace. Let me repeat that. That'll sound kind of controversial. The true sons and daughters of God are not sinners saved by grace. For we are children of the Most High. And you were in him. And you are part of him. And you are a continuation of him. Here on the face of the earth. Now this flesh in which you were born. This thing here might have done all kinds of stuff. But that man. As Paul calls him. The hidden man of the heart. That man never did anything wrong to begin with. As First John. For the seed of God cannot commit sin. It cannot do it. For it is God himself in the individual working out there. If they make us humans, we'll look and see them do this. Or maybe they made that. It's this outer man here doing all kinds of tricks upon them. But you hold on to God's hand. And God will deliver you in every possible way. Amen. Thank God. We are the very attributes. Or the thoughts. The attributes of God himself. A man and his thoughts are one. A man and his attributes are one. God and his children are one. Jesus said, I and my father are one. And we can say that here today. I and my father are one. Say it. I and my father are one. Say it again. I and my father are one. One more time. I and my father are one. Praise be to God Almighty that God so merciful, loving, and kind forgive us of our sins and come to dwell within our hearts and to give us a new life, a new start, a new beginning and to living us, walk in us and to have his will and plan made known to us. Amen. Oh, praise God, the mystery of God from eternity back to eternity. Jesus said, I come from God and I'm going to back to God. What does he say? I come from being God up there. I come down here. I'm doing this work of 
have redemption. And when it's over, I'm going back to being God in the heavens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the other sense, we come from the very mind and thoughts of God from before the foundations of the world. This world is not our home. We are just a passing through. And our treasures are laid up. Oh, way beyond the blue. Oh, praise God. We come from God. We're passing through the, this world of time and sin and, and, and suffering. And we're going back to God from whence we came. Oh, blessed be his holy name. That's why He ha we have the rapture time. The rapture is here to, uh, to take God's children out and take them back back where they really came from to give glory and honor to his blessed and wonderful name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy today that you can be in God's house along with the other thoughts of God, the other children of God, the other people of God, Holy, holy hearts and holding hands and raising up holy hands without wrath and without doubting, giving praise and honor and glory to his wonderful and marvelous name. My friend, this subject is so vast and so deep. We will continue speaking this next week to get a little more into Melchizedek, not to give you more than you are able to bear, but to just to give you enough that you can go into your Bible during the coming weeks and begin to read. For any true believer reads their Bible and prays every day. So let us pray one for another. Let us read the Word of God. Let us look into it and search out these things, whether they be true, but they are true, for they are in the word of God, and Jesus has made it plain. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless you, my friends, that you clearly see the revelation of the Godhead. You clearly see the revelation of God's Spirit. Coming into a word form body in Melchizedek. And then that word form body, the word become flesh in Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ was the fullness of all the thoughts of God. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Then he went to the cross, died there. Out of him poured out the blood, uh, poured out the water and blood from his side, which is a symbol as Eve was taken out of Adam. So were the, church, the true bride of Christ. You and I, believing sons, we didn't know anything about it. Just like you did not know when you were in your natural daddy, you have no consciousness of that. You have no consciousness of it. We have no consciousness of when we were in God. But the hour has come on the power of God. When the Holy Spirit wants to make his children born again, manifested sons and daughters to reveal himself and his character, his characteristics. Oh, praise God, may the Holy Spirit save you, cleanse you, wash you, strengthen you. If you're a believer, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're not, you need to be baptized as soon as possible, my friends. Then live like a child of God. Live like a daughter of God. Live like a son of God. And we'll come together again on Wednesday night when we will have the teaching on the seven church ages. Then back next Sunday again for another part of this Melchizedek. The royal seed of Abraham meets Melchizedek. May the Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters. I love you and God loves you. Amen. <laughs>